In this video, we will continue with solving absolute value inequalities. You will find this on page 377 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Let's look at another example. Solve this. Now you see the, the inequality sign on both, oh, not inequality, the absolute value on both sides. Now can you still remember the method that we did with equations? We basically just square both sides. Okay. Then we end up with this. So this and this. Then we take everything to one side and now we sit with a quadratic inequality. Now can you remember in chapter 1 how did we solve? We make it an equation and then we get the points and it's negative so it's like this. And now smaller will be underneath the x-axis. So now if you want to highlight it, this part. Okay, so remember to check your answer in the absolute value equations. So now I have my two answers, one and this. So basically just substitute it there. You can make an um, equal sign and see if the sides are equal. So both is correct. This indicates that, um, that the graphs intersect in two points. It can happen because now it's two absolute value graphs. So the solution is x is smaller than 1 and x is bigger. Just like the sketch there. Let's just get that away. Smaller than 1 and or bigger than 7. Okay. Method 2 is making the sketches, and it's just nice if you see what the sketches. Oh, so it's meaning where is the x plus 2? This is this one. Where is this one smaller? So where is this one under? It's under from here to there. So basically it's like, so the solution is this. I want you to stop the video, and I want you to do number A. Again, you can continue the video as soon as you want to finish. Okay, so let's do the method where we square both sides. So we're going to find 2x minus 1 squared is smaller than 3x squared. So this is going to be 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And this is going to be 9x squared smaller than 0. Okay, so if I solve this... I'm going to get here negative 5x squared minus 4x plus 1 is smaller than 0. Now remember, always, let's do it on the side that you do the graph. So you're going to have, um, say, negative 5x squared minus 4x plus 1. I just want to see that inequalities. Put it equal zero. Now, just remember, if you do it like this, then the graph is going to be like this. But you can make it an equal sign. Let's just, ooh, sorry, let's just make it smaller. You can make it an equal sign by saying five. Or you can change the sign for the factorization. Okay, so if you look here, it's going to be uh, 5 and 1, 1 and 1. Because 5 minus 1 is 4, and the biggest over cross product, it's a positive, and this is a negative. So it's going to be 5x minus 1, and x plus 1. So... 5x equals 1. So divide 5, divide 5. So x is 1 over, x is negative 1, and say 1 over 5. And don't forget that the sketch will look something like this. So if I say smaller, and I'm just going to highlight this to you, then smaller is under, under. Okay. So basically, I'm just going to find this. I'm going to say here, 
So um, I'm going to test it, test it. So it's 1 over 5 and negative 1. So if I put it, I do the check. It's not the sketch of the absolute values. It's just the sketch to solve the quadratic inequality. Okay, so let's just put that two values in, the negative 1 and the, the 1 over 5. So the 1 over 5 and negative 1. So if I put it in here, 2, 1 over 5 minus 1 is equal to So this is going to be 2 over 5 minus 1, and this is 3 over 5. Okay, and then if you're going to simplify this, this is going to be negative 3 over 5. Okay, it's equal to 3 over 5, and because it's there, you're going to say 3 over 5 equals 3 over 5. So yes, definitely this one is going to work. And if I want to put in the other one, let's just, then I'm going to put negative one. So this is going to be negative 2, negative 1. So this is also going to be negative 3 equals, oh, I forgot the inequality in the other one, but it, it's going to work. A negative 3, and that's going to be 3 equals 3. Okay, so it's also, so if, even if there was an inequality in the other one, uh, then it was still going to be, and it was positive, then the, the answer will also be positive. But it's still going to work. So both is going to be correct. So what is your solution? I'm just going to take now. So therefore, let's just make it in red. X, now look here, look at the blue line. X is smaller than negative 1 or X is bigger than 1 over 5. Okay. And that's your final answer. Okay, if you make a sketch of both, and I just want to show you quickly, let's just do the sketch there. It's not necessary. I'm just going to show you. Okay, let's do it by using a sketch. It's not necessary, I just want to show you. So the, I will make a sketch for 2x minus 1. And I will make a sketch for 3x. Now, because I don't see anything extra plus 1 and minus 1, I think the best will be just to use a table in both of them. So basically, just go for a table. It's always a nice method also to use. So if I go for the table, Okay, so in this case, I'm just basically going to say, okay, this is x. And this is y. So if I'm going to substitute, so we can do a little bit negative also. So let's take it negative 2. So if it's negative 4 minus 1, so it's going to be negative 5, so it's going to become 5. If I make negative 1, so then it's going to be... Uh, negative 2 my minus, so it's going to be negative 3, so um, I just make it positive 3. And then it's going to be 0, so it's just going to be um, 1. And then if it's 1, so it's 2 times 1, so it's 2 minus 1, so it's 1, and it's going to be 1. Okay, I'm just going to just do it a little bit further. Okay, so, and if it's then 2, get my thing correct. 
So it's 4 minus 1 and that's 3 and that's just 3. And if it's uh, 3, then it's 6 minus 1 and that's 5. Okay, and then again I'm going to do this one, x, y, and then it's negative 2. So 3 times negative 2, so it's negative 6, it's going to be 6, and it's negative 1, so it's negative 3, uh, and it's going to be 3, and it's 0, it's going to be 0, and it's going to be 1, and it's going to be 3, and we can do an extra one there. It's going to be 2, and it's going to be 6. So if I make a grid, let's get it into a grid. I'm sorry. And let's just make it yellow also. <laughs> let's just get the pen. A ruler. Okay, so let's just see the, the y values is not so negative just the x values. Okay, so if I'm going to plot that blue one, so it's going to be negative 2 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's going to be negative 1 and 3. And it's 0 and 1. And it is uh, 1 and 1. Okay, if you want to see the vertex there, it's in the middle there. So you can work it out just to find that. So it's 1 and 1, and then 2 and 3, and 3 and 5. So that sketch will look like this. Basically, if we just go there, go there. Okay. And then negative 2, negative 2, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then negative 1 and 3. And then 0 and 0. And then 1 and 3. And then 2 and 6. Okay. Now, if you look at, at the sketch now, unfortunately I clean it. But if you can remember what was the solution, it was... Uh, X, correct. X was smaller than negative 1 or X was bigger than 1 over 5. So basically it's cutting there at 1 over 5. So there will be 1 over 5 and negative 1, it's there. And what I'm actually asking you, if you look, where is this one smaller? So where is the blue one under? So if you look here, the blue one is under there, do you see? So from there to there, it's just an open circle. And the blue one is under here, from here, and also there. And that is making sense. It's x is smaller than negative 1, or x is bigger, because that is the, 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 the part where the blue one is under the green one. But it's not necessary, I just wanted to explain to you the answer.